Hi everyone, my name is Marius. I'm a postdoc in the lab of Barbara Freudlein um, at ETH Zurich. Let me just share my screen. And I'm going to give a quick flash talk of uh, Moslin, which is a method that I developed in collaboration with these great people here. Um, you can read the full story in our preprint that is up at BioArchive by scanning this QR code here. And we also have um, an open source implementation available in Python uh, on GitHub here. So you can visit this repository to learn how to apply this to your own data. And we also have a uh, tutorial there. So the basic idea of Moslin is to be able to relate um, cells that have been sequenced for their gene expression at different time points. So relating snapshot samples at different time points. If you have additional um, lineage tracing data available measured in the same cells. So let's start simple. Say we have uh, two samples of cells, usually single cell RNA seq, measured at two different time points, one earlier one T1, one later one T2. Uh, this is the setting of the Waddington OT paper here from Jeffrey Schiebinger, 2019. And basically what we want to do is we want to recover differentiation trajectories between T1 and T2. So in an optimal transport formulation, we write down a cost function, a cost matrix M that tells us how, how expensive is it uh, in terms of gene expression to move one cell from T1 to T2. And we can optimize over that uh, with this objective function that you can see down here, some regularization to recover the ideal coupling between these two time points that tells us how likely are cells from T1 to transition into cells from T2. Now in Moslin, the idea is to take this one step further um, and to incorporate additional lineage tracing information if you have it. And this can take the following form. We usually refer to this as independent clonal evolution. So say you start some sort of barcoding process uh, in two different individuals. Often this is based on some evolving CRISPR-Cas system that inserts random mutations into a certain uh, target loci that you've engineered. And then at some early time point, say we're studying zebrafish here, you sequence and you read out single cell gene expression as well as lineage information that you can use to reconstruct lineage trees for this individual at this early time point. And you do the same thing at a different individual at a later time point. And again, you get gene expression information for every single cell as well as lineage information. Now, you can directly compare this gene expression information just as before and try to find a likely mapping between the cells. But you cannot do that for the lineage information because these barcodes have been generated independently from each other, so they're not directly comparable. For these situations, we use a variant of optimal transport that is called gromov wasserstein optimal transport that allows you to relate quantities that have been measured in different metric spaces, like this lineage tracing information um, that is not directly comparable between the animal from the early time point and the animal from the late time point. And it takes this form here where you have two cost matrices. C1 would quantify lineage distances in the early time point. C1 would quantify lineage distances in the late time point. You then have your coupling here and you have this quadratic term. And the assumption you're making is a weak assumption of lineage correspondence between the two time points. So you're saying on average for most cells, um, a pair of cells that has a certain lineage distance at the early time point is more likely to be mapped to a corresponding pair of cells at the later time point that has a similar lineage distance compared to a pair of cells that has a very different lineage distance at the second time point. And this doesn't have to hold for every single uh, pair of cells. You just enforce this on average. Now in Moslin, we combine the, uh, the sort of first thing that I showed you, the uh, the linear term here, where you directly say you should link cells across time that have similar gene expression with the quadratic term that enforces this weak correspondence in lineage relationships between the two time points, even if individually they are not comparable. So the final uh, algorithm sort of balances between these two terms and the objective function trying to find a mapping that is consistent in gene expression, so minimizing the overall distance that cells have to travel in gene expression while also being consistent with the lineage information.
We applied this across a few different settings, started in simulations and validated that Moslin is really able to recover the ground truth that is known in these simulations uh, more accurately compared to earlier algorithms that uh, either just use gene expression information or that use gene expression and lineage information. We then go one step further and apply Moslin to C. elegans embryogenesis data. Where we combine it with cell rank to um, compute fake probabilities in the system, as well as uh, showing that we can recover known driver genes for certain fate decisions and also predict new ones. And lastly, we go to uh, zebrafish heart regeneration, where it has previously been established that there's some transiently activated fibroblast states that are important for this process of injury regeneration here. And now in Moslin, we're asking the question, how are they dynamically related? So which of these, where do these states derive from and how are they related to one another? So what is really the temporal sequence of activation of these different states. Now, this is just a quick overview. Uh, you can visit my poster to find out more or read our preprint here at BioArchive and uh, check out the GitHub to, uh, to use our implementation um, uh, and to learn more by following the tutorial. Thanks a lot.